Okay, I'm going to challenge myself and make this under 10 minutes long. All right. Why gaming subscription services will never be, will never ever be the way that the majority of consumers happen to spend money on games. Okay. So number one, we're going to take a look at what Matt Piscatella said from um, Circana. And uh, it is a firm that analyzes video game spending. So he said that subscription services growth has flattened and sub services on console and, play and PC platforms accounts for only 10% of total video game spending in the US. So there is the data, right? But let's talk about the reasons why they, they, this data happens to be true. A lot of the time we are told that uh, Microsoft with Game Pass wants to be the Netflix of gaming. So let's just take a look at video game, uh, sorry, at video streaming services. And I'll tell you why um, it's just not going to work that way. There are three key differences. When we are taking a look at experiencing a Netflix catalog, three, th three realities about that medium prove themselves to be true. Number one, they are typically more transient or shorter experiences than video games, right? So a typical episode of a TV show might be 22 to an, an hour long. A typical movie might be about two hours long. A typical AAA game might be about 40 hours long. That is the first key difference. The second key difference is that you can experience multiple shows at a time. You can quite easily go from watching something like a Squid Game to watching a horror show or then to watching a comedy or a cartoon. You can fling yourself, even within one you know, viewing session, you can fling yourself across different genres and everything else. By contrast, people typically play only one game at a time. And in case you're wondering where did I get that information from, over here we got it from the Sony CEO, Kenishiro Yoshida, when he was interviewed, and he basically said this, we do subscription, so we do subscription business models, but at the same time, people usually play one game at a time. So an all-you-can-eat type with many games may not be so valuable compared with video streaming services. And of course, he's absolutely right. And this is the point that I brought up when we were on the Pod um, Podworks podcast last time. The point is this, most people only play one game at a time, whereas a lot of people can watch multiple shows at a time or even multiple movies at a time. I mean, there are some people out there, some ungodly types that will start a movie, not even a show, but a movie, pause halfway through and then just go watch something else, like even another movie. And they can have multiple movies in rotation and they will just start and stop them. Oh my goodness, that is horrible. I, I could never do that. I could never do that. Once I begin a movie, I need to finish it before I, 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 I do anything else, basically. But my goodness, I have met so many people who, I mean, it's an affront to humanity, the way that they interact with movies. I mean, I just feel, I feel sorry for all these directors. Like the pause button, it should, it should be banned. Okay. Once you start a movie, you need to commit to it. Okay. But that's typically what we do for video games. Once we start a video game, most of us typically commit to it. Some of us may have one multiplayer game and one single player game, but again, when you're looking at the broader body of, you know, the entire fan base or the entire gaming community, the majority of people play one game at a time. What that means is that the longer you spend on that one game, the less valuable the rest of the subscription catalog you have is to you. So this whole idea that we are going to be spending, you know, $10 a month or $20 a month to have access to 500 games. That's good, but if one of those 500 games is going to take, let's say, 500 hours of your time, now it has tremendously diminished the value of the other 499 games you could have been playing. And that's always the issue. And finally, the biggest difference is that video games, sorry, video games compared to movies or TV shows, is that video games are an active, interactive platform. When you are playing a video game, you can't be doing anything else. And while Typically, it is good for you to sit down in front of your couch and watch a movie. It is still a passive experience, still allowing you to pick up your phone or go to the kitchen, or, you know, open, open the bar, answer the keys, talk to your wife, you know, whatever it is that you need to do. You can still do that while typically interacting with a TV show. Now, a movie people tend to pay a little bit more attention to, but it still is a passive experience. It does not require your input in order to give you an output. When you look at video games, what happens there is that as soon as you need to do anything else, that, ex that interaction between you and the game needs to be paused, it needs to be halted, it needs to be stopped. Okay, so those are the three key differences why we simply interact differently and therefore the value of having a catalog 
is completely different between video streaming services and uh, video game services. Another two examples that we can take a look at are music and books. In music, Spotify and Apple Music and those Tidal, those kind of services have taken over the industry because they take the three properties, the transience, the fact that we can listen to multiple songs at a time, and the passive nature of music listening, they take that to the, to the extreme over there. They maximize the value of the catalog because you can just be experiencing music if you wanted to 24 hours a day. There are people that go to sleep listening to music, you know, something soft, something classical, whatever. But you can actually make best use of that, right? You can listen to music when you're driving. You can listen to music when you're talking. You can listen to music when you're jogging. You can listen to music pretty much all the time, constantly, and that will not be a typical behavior. Whereas, when you take a look at books, another area where subscription services have failed to be the, become the majority or to disrupt the industry, that's because, again, you typically listen to one book at a time. Reading a book is typically, if you're not using an audiobook, that is, reading a, a physical book is typically an active experience. The page doesn't turn itself. If you're not there, if you're not paying attention to it, you are not interacting with it. You know, even though it's not active in that you need to give an, an input, like you need to type something, but it is active in the fact that it doesn't play itself. Okay. And then finally, the, 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 um, the thing is that once again, we are going to be committed for a much longer period of time with books. You know, a typical book might take a person 10 to 12 hours to read. You know, that is far longer than a movie or a piece of music. So those are the reasons, guys. Because of this, all of that is to say, gaming subscription services can never become the way that the majority of us interact with video games, simply because of that. Because the ironic thing is that the more you find games that you fall in love with, that you spend hundreds of hours in, in a subscription service for gaming, the less valuable that subscription service becomes to you. Because let's say that you're one of those people that wants to spend, let's say, 1,000 hours, you know, playing God of War Ragnarok. Let's say, again, that you are a typical human being and you have maybe 10 hours a week to play any game. But you spend 1,000 hours on God of War. That means that it will take you 100 weeks or over two years to playing just one, that one game. It doesn't matter if it's $10 a month or $20 a month. The math just doesn't make sense for you to be paying all of that money to experience just one game. You know? And while you might think to yourself, okay, very few people are going to be spending 1,000 hours in God of War Ragnarok. Fair enough. But a lot of people do spend thousands of hours, thousands of hours a year on multiplayer games again if you were to get those multiplayer games through a subscription service it would be taking money away from you it would be better for you to just spend that money outright but then even if you stuck to single player games and you stuck to a single player game that would take 50 hours on average but you still only had 10 hours a week that would still take you five weeks to experience just that one game and while you can say yes it was cheaper for you to get that one game through the subscription than it was you know buying it outright the point is that that one game completely nullified the value of the rest of the catalog for a whole month and a half so that's my point guys and we're going to get out of here look at that about nine minutes i think i did pretty well hopefully you enjoyed the video have a good day